So if we talk about temperature, I can stay in the same value and I can adjust the temperature a little bit. I can go warmer or cooler in the temperature. You want to make better paintings. Today is your day. Mark Feldman, what are you going to teach us today on Art School Live? I want to talk to you about a totally different way of seeing when you're out in the field. I want you to be able to see a composition. I don't want to just have you paint uh, what you're seeing. I want you to be inspired by it. You're creating uh, an illusion, an impression of the uh, scene. And um, uh, I, we're going to take elements. I'm going to take you through some steps and teach you how to see a scene in a different way. Okay? So first of all, this happens to be a scene in Laguna, right? I mean, a lot of us have been to Laguna and painted it. This is Heisler Park and one of my favorite places to paint. And um, so I look at that and I go, what the hell am I going to paint? I, everything's exciting. Um, uh, I see the mountains in the background. I see the, uh, the, the bluff, which is this beautiful color. And so what I want to do is I want to break it down. I want to see shapes, not things, okay? See shapes, not things. So I'm trying to abstract it in my mind so that I can uh, feel free to move things around in my composition, but always reference these palm trees, this cliff, this background. And so one of my tricks is I take my phone, and I take a photograph of the scene, okay? Then I try to desaturate it. In other words, take all the color out of it so that I can start seeing it in just value shapes, okay? And it allows me to Mark. separate myself from the reality of the situation. Hey, Mark. Mark. Yeah. Uh, we have some people watching who probably don't even know what a value shape is. Would you just touch on that? Well, I'm going to talk about that next. That's a perfect lead in. Okay. So <laughs> a shape, you've got the shape of the, the mountain in the background. And so I'm saying that that whole shape is one value. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate this into one dark value. In other words, the dark light, the black and white on a scale. So the darkest value is going to be these palm trees up front here. And then the lighter values are value are the black and white of what's in the light. Okay, so this is in the dark, so it's the darkest value. And then I've got some values like this white of the foam of the ocean. And then I've got these middle values here, which are kind of halfway down the scale about a four or a five. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm starting to abstract this and see it as shapes and not just a tree and a cliff and that sort of thing. I want you to see this because what it's going to do is it's going to free you up to be able to move things around in a good composition. Uh, and I'm going to show you how I do this in a composition, which can be very powerful. I have found that that if you look at a great painting, it's really the composition that makes it work so well. And uh, the, the magic trick is that you don't necessarily always see uh, it as a, a composition, but it just is very pleasing to you. Everything seems to work. So what I try to do, I break the scene into five different distinct shapes. I've got the mountain in the background. I've got the cliff. I've got the palm trees. I've got the water. And this is a thumbnail that I can do uh, in the field to kind of break it down in my own mind. Then, like I was saying before, I create three to four different values. So darkest value, the, the darkest on the scale of light to dark. I have a medium value here. And then I've got the light of the cliff. Moving down the scale in the composition process, 
okay? I divide my canvas into thirds, and I try to place important elements on these thirds. Again, this is creating a dynamic composition. And then the last thing I do is I uh, try to accomplish either two thirds dark, one third light, or one third dark, two thirds light. So again, coming back to these thirds. So that's my kind of thumbnails that I do. Now what I did to kind of show you really how this this comes all together. Now wait a minute. I've I'm going to I'm just going to interrupt you for just a second because sure. you're a bit of you're a bit of a slacker. And nobody's ever this prepared. <laughs> you need to well, move that camera. Know, that, really that, you to need to move the camera. Is. Move the camera up a little bit. You just lowered it okay. too much. There we go. A little How's bit that? more. Okay, that's good. A little bit more. Okay, good. All right, so the next thing, remember, I was an architect and a design architect. And so design is everything for me. And I think that the, the, the way to really accomplish a great painting is to work hard on your composition and your design. And the only way to do this is try different alternatives, okay? So we'll see which one you like the best. We've got the first composition. Again, here's my thirds. Okay, uh, here's my value shapes. And I've got a dark, I've got a medium, and I've got a light. In other words, showing it three values. Okay, so that's with a high horizon. Then down here, I've got a lower horizon. I want to see, is this more about the sky or is it about the ocean? Here, it's the ocean and not the sky. Uh, I've got this cliff pulled over to a third over here and the trees on this third. Here, I'm pulling this more back towards this third that is right here and showing more of the ocean. I don't know what's going to be right when I attack these, but I can certainly see it once I'm looking at all four. Okay, so this is a little bit lower. Uh, this shows the cliff a little smaller. So I try all these out. I do lots of sketches so that by the time that I'm painting a big painting, say for the gold medal or something like that, that, um, that I've got a great composition. And then once I create the great composition, it's all very easy from there. The, the thing really paints itself. So let, let's... Uh, Let's open to a few little questions here, and then I'm going to show you how I take it from here. Oh, you're going to Eric, open up the questions? Question. Yeah, it, at this point, I want to know. I think you just need. I think you just need to keep going because to get to get questions and answer questions fast is very okay. difficult. All right, so let's let's do that. Um, so, Eric, I'm going to ask your opinion. Which of these four sketches really catches your eye? Uh, which which of the four compositions? Yeah, A, B, C, or D. Which is the composition that you think is the strongest? I think it's between C and B. C and B. Okay. Yeah, uh, I and I would say, well, quite frankly. There are elements of each one that I think strengthen it. Yeah. <laughs> right. Excuse me. But, um, okay. and, I, and I know that's a trick question because you already have an answer. But I think the, uh, that probably uh, C is the strongest. Okay, let's go with C. All, All right. right. All right, what do you so, think is the strongest? I, you know, I'm really torn. And I'll tell you, I end up... Uh, painting several of these because I am not exactly sure. And actually I asked Anne, who's here, she's with me. And um, I always ask her because I need an unbiased point of view, but let's, let's. Uh, let's I would say that if you took the two palm trees from a and you put uh, them yeah. and you put them into C, then C, that would be stronger. 
Okay. See, I think I think so, A from a simplicity standpoint is is very strong, but I like the way that C leads my eye back better. There you go. So what's strong about this is I've got one big palm tree. Uh, I could put another one in easily, but see, this is the process that I go through. Sometimes I'll set it aside and just glance at it, and um, it comes to me. What is the stronger? Okay, here's uh, what the com here's from the comments. Uh, let's let let's read them out to you. Maggie says C. Regina says C. Eunice says four. Suzanne says C. Four. Four. That's, that's D. D. Okay. Okay. Gisela says D. Karen says B and D. Lamba says B. Elaine says C. Matthew says A. Ann says C. Uh, Hunter says D. Jenny says C. Lamba says D for All right. Placement. I got the general. All right. You got the drift. All right. Oh, they're yeah, going to okay, keep going. Okay. So look. <laughs> I, can, you, can you see uh, the paint here? Yeah, a little bit. In fact, let's put it up here. All right. Okay. So what I've done is my three values, I've mixed up uh, colors so I can colorize this and um, uh, stay in the same value, okay? Right. So I'm gonna start with my darkest dark. So what, all and three of those are in the same value? No. No, I've they're not. The lightest value, okay. the mid value, and the darkest value. All right. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to start with the darkest value. Maybe I'll I'll darken it just a little bit on the edge. Okay. And I'm going to start by painting over this uh, this kind of black and white. It's really warm and neutral color, but but this is the value that I really want to shoot for. Okay. So. I'm doing it very loosely, but um, I want to show you that I can colorize this in a way that um, that keeps this value system that I've set up. And then I can start working from this to colorize this, but stay in the same value. Okay? Yep. Now, the next value in the light and I'm working from dark to light, is this medium shape uh, right here. And it's a little bit warmer shaped because it's closer to you. So if we talk about temperature, I can stay in the same value and I can adjust the temperature a little bit. I can go warmer or cooler in the temperature. Okay. This is a little bit closer than this. It's pretty close to the same value, but I'm going to have this kind of greenish color that I've mixed up. And I'm going to put this right next to this dark color. And it's all starting to work and it's staying in the same value. Like that. Then if I then step back, I've got, see how this green and this blue, bluish, it's got a little pink in it, is pretty much the same value but it steps back because it's much cooler. So I'm starting to get this atmospheric perspective in here that starts making that painting. But again, I've, I've stuck with the same composition and it has this depth because I've got a dark up in front that's a little bit warmer. I've got this medium value in pretty much the same, but this is cooler and that's warmer, okay? And then we said that the water, which is a deeper blue, is about that same value. And I'm gonna make that beautiful blue ocean, kind of that bluish color in that value. We're gonna create this like that. We're going to cover this up. And again, that value is reading, the value structure is reading of this. I'm going to get into the palm tree, which is going to be a little greener. 
Are your value studies and dry? Yes, they are. Okay. They are. I painted them over the weekend when I was watching the final four, when I was watching Duke uh, yeah. win. Okay. Then I paint, take this, this kind of yellowish color and paint, paint the cliff. And see how that's all pretty striking. I mean, I've spent five minutes colorizing this. And it's because I kept my values, it's starting to read. How's that read there? It reads. Okay. It's striking. Now, it's striking and powerful. Uh, I'm going to take this white, okay, and paint this foam. Got to always keep your brush as clean as possible. Some people will paint their whites with a different brush. Not me. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to. I like mud. I know you can only you can only afford one brush because you're a poor San Diegan who has to pay for expensive housing and high real estate taxes. <laughs> so, you want to know the uh, the brushes I use? Not particularly. I love, uh, rosemary brushes. Um, they're the best. And uh, I paint on Raymar uh, panels, which I love a lot. I use Gamblin uh, paints and Hughes Hughes paints, which I love a lot. Let's let's do this uh, sky while we're at it here. And a little bit of blue in there will be just fine. It's hard to it's hard to see the sky because the light's reflecting it out. But right. when you step right, in you front of the line, 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 yeah. because I'm keeping that value. So I'm trying to hold these values as much as possible, and it allows them to stand out, these various shapes. Okay. So now I've got I've got kind of the next step in this evolution of painting. But I've got my values working really well. I've got three values. I've got about five good shapes here. And um, I can then start putting in detail. Like the Hotel Laguna is, is back here. Um, I'll probably put some white uh, for the foam crashing. I can start getting into detail. But I've got my basic composition, and the composition is strong. So that I feel that something like this is really worth painting. And I'll show you. So I took, I've, I've taken this because I've painted this a few times. But this is the sort of thing that um, I can then come up with. And I can start getting uh, some ins and outs in these waves. So they're not quite so graphic. But you can see that I've got my light value back here my strongest, most colorized uh, value in here of these cliffs, and then these palm trees in front, and it all holds together. So that is really what I want to say, and I'll, I'll, get, I'll go at it one more time in a way that we need to see these almost as abstract, right? I don't want you painting the scene perfectly the way that you see it. We try to enhance color. We try to edit, move things around, enlarge things, maybe uh, get rid of something completely, and then work hard at take your time to build a foundation of different ideas that are going to be a strong composition. And this this is really the secret that I've found to be able to progress to create a great painting. So, well, you know, you're such a good teacher. I, I, and since you've been doing all these shameless self promotions for non paying products, uh, I'll, I'll just do a shameless promotion for your video, uh, which is okay, called good. Design Strategies for Powerful Paintings with Mark Fellman. And uh, he goes through all the details in these paintings and how, how to do it. 
And those are available at painttube.tv. All right, now I've I've done my job. Okay. <laughs> I, so, can give, I can give Mark trouble because we're friends. Yeah. But, you know, uh, yeah, it's interesting. Says. The reason that uh, I started doing some of these uh, videos was uh, when you can crystallize your thinking and you can start talking about it and teaching it, uh, it makes it so much stronger. I remember when I was doing my streamlined video, uh, I thought, you know, if I just follow my steps that I'm telling everybody else to follow, then I'm going to be a stronger painting, painter. And it's really uh, come together like that for me. Uh, I take the time to go through uh, understanding a scene, analyzing it, breaking it into shapes, and then creating a strong composition. And if you do that, you're going to make such a big change in your work that you'll be very surprised and people will say, wow, we're, you're learning something new. What is it? And then you start telling them about it and uh, you can explain why your work's so strong. That's an important concept, Mark, because planning is everything. And, you know, I was out painting in San Miguel this weekend, and, well, all last week, and I, I kept struggling with this one scene, and so I thought about it all day. I thought about, about the, I did it, I didn't sketch it out, which I should have, but I had it all done in my head. And then when I got up there and I nailed it, and uh, it, and all of a sudden you're, you're getting all these positive feedback comments from, from decent artists and right. saying, hey, you nailed it. So it, it, it yeah. has a lot to do with planning. Absolutely, if you can. Yes. Now, I'm right. probably biased as an architect. Because uh, I think planning is everything, but uh, uh, I think that planning and doing thumbnails and these quick little sketches are going to get you a lot further down the road. Absolutely. Well, this was a good lesson, Mark. Um, so tell me, uh, what are you doing in May? Oh, in May? Well, first of all, I'm ending up at the Plein Air Convention, which I have not missed one convention since the very beginning. Is that true? I, I go, that. Yes, I go every year because it's like returning to summer camp. I just love it. I see all my friends, and it's it's really a fabulous time. To warm up for the plein air convention, I'm going to go up with Kathleen Hudson and Mark Shasha and a number of others to southern Utah and go paint for a week, and then we're all going to head down to the plein air convention so uh, i'm gonna be ready to go when i get there i want to go yes yes i know <laughs> i know i know but you notice we'll he's you he just, just kind of like well i didn't give you an invitation <laughs> yeah eric you're always welcome yeah yeah always right welcome. right well i'm sorry i'm busy that week <laughs> what i do have coming up in april is the olmstead plein air invitational and then I got into Easton this year, which I'm really excited about, That's which is uh, the East Coast Grand, Grand uh, it's, it's the big, it's the big event on the East Coast. And then in October is Laguna. So That's I've got cool. lots of fun things coming up and I'm gearing up to paint really well for those. All right. Well, that's terrific, Mark. Thank you so much for doing this today. And, and uh, if you were going to tell somebody who's never, ever been to the Plein Air Convention, uh, <clears throat> just 30 seconds, <clears throat> excuse me, 30 seconds on what it's like. Go. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the, the best part about it is the people that you uh, admire so much are all there. They're going to be teaching you. Uh, they're, they'll talk to you. I mean, I was stunned how open and friendly everybody was and inclusive. And there's it's almost like drinking out of a fire hose. There's so much information, so many things to do. It's just a blast, and you're exhausted by the end of it because you've done so much. That sounds good. All right. Well, thank you, Mark. I appreciate your feedback today, and thank you for, for your um, mastery of technology. <laughs> yes. <laughs> thank you so much. All right. Our guest today, Mark Feldman. Mark, uh, you are a rock star, and we're excited uh, to have you here today, and thank you for doing it. Bye-bye.